everyone, it's Calvin again, and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a really fun and easy kind of stroke-based technique to paint this fish illustration. So I've already got a watercolor paper texture loaded into Procreate, and uh, as usual, I'm using the St. Petersburg texture, but pretty much any of the textures would work fine for this kind of project. And for the brushes, I'm using the regular brush kit, but I'm using the bonus set. And if you have the regular brush kit and you aren't sure where to find the bonus set, uh, just check out this short video clip uh, and I'll try to explain it maybe in just like 20 or 30 seconds uh, what the bonus set is uh, and where you can find it. So I've already got a sketch loaded in and uh, you guys can have this one for free. It's a little bit different than the uh, usual sketches that I do and that's because it's a stroke based kind of sketch. So it's just giving you some rough guidelines about where the strokes are and kind of what direction they're going. Just make sure when you place the sketch, uh, make sure it's set as the very top layer. It's set to multiply, uh, and maybe you can lower the transparency to around 50%. Now to start painting, I'll just select a blank layer underneath the texture, just like you normally would. And I'm gonna go over to the uh, bonus set, and I'll start with the fine smooth round brush and a pretty kind of saturated uh, yellow color, something like this. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now the first stroke I'm gonna do is just the kind of backbone stroke. So I'll start very, very lightly, pressing harder and harder, slightly taper it off. Uh, and then while I'm down here, I'll just kind of roughly fill out the head. But I don't have to worry about doing it exactly right because we're gonna use the eraser later on to sort of refine that edge. Next, I'm just gonna go through and uh, do all the strokes just as best as I can. There we go, that looks really good. Uh, I need to refine the head a little bit, so we'll zoom in there. I'm gonna grab the eraser brush, and uh, at kind of a small size, I'll just kind of fix my uh, overlapping strokes there and try to make it better match the drawing. Now for now, I don't really need the sketch anymore, so I'll just turn that off. And uh, I'm gonna drop in a secondary color, and I'm gonna do that with the selection tool set to freehand. And basically, I'll just make a selection that covers the head and then kind of along the back and the tail, circle back, and then just kind of connect it back together. Then I'll feather that selection just a little bit, maybe 10%. Then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll darken it, saturate it, and then shift the hue a little bit more towards a kind of reddish orange color. There we go, that looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna grab the uh, water blender brush at the very bottom there. And at a small enough size that it kind of fits in there with all these details, I'll just kind of blend all these overlapping colors. And I'm gonna to try to do a little bit of creative blending because this is a simple illustration. And I think it'll benefit if I can kind of get some kind of watery effects going on there. Now in some areas, it might be nice to kind of force a blending. So even though there's a gap there, uh, I will just pull this through and then kind of mix both of those different shades together. And then later on, I can go in there with the eraser uh, and then fix it a little bit so it looks a little bit more natural. Next, I'm gonna add the eye real quick and I'll do this all in the same layer. So I'll select pure black and I'm gonna change the brush to the rough detail dotter brush. And at kind of a small size, maybe 10%, I'll just rough out the eye kind of as an oval shape and then I'll fill it in a few times because this brush is a little bit transparent. After that, I'll grab pure white and I'll add a little highlight on it there. Next, I'm gonna add a couple of highlights. So I'll grab the selection tool, set to freehand, and I'll start with a kind of a highlight on the forehead. So I'll make a selection like that, feather it out. And uh, I'm gonna use the curves tool. So I'm gonna grab the curves uh, adjustment there. And uh, if you haven't used this before, it can do a lot of stuff, but if you just wanna lighten something to give a highlight, all you have to do is grab the bottom node and just kind of raise it up. And you can see it brightens the colors in a really nice kind of even way. There we go. I'll add another highlight to the sides here. This one will be much uh, less kind of pronounced. I'll just make two selections along these sides, feather them out, curves, and I'll just bump it up just a little bit. Next, I wanna make the fins look very kind of thin and uh, kind of ethereal, I guess. So I'll grab the selection tool again and just select the ends of the fins. There we go, I'll circle it back. I'll feather this one out quite a bit. Then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll desaturate them, not, not really totally, but I'll lower it maybe around 10%, 20%. Then I'm gonna go to the curves tool again. 
and now they've been desaturated and this time I'll brighten them a little bit using the curves tool. There we go. And this will just kind of give them that clear, thin, almost transparent kind of look. Now, if you want to add scales, uh, now would be a great time. And I'll do those on another layer. And I'm going to use pure white. Uh, I'll use the same rough detail dotter brush, probably the same size I've been using as fine. And I'll just make a kind of series of parallel lines, I guess almost like grill marks. <laughs> and I'll do the other side as well. And then I'll do some kind of perpendicular marks as well. So I have this kind of crisscross pattern and I will lower the transparency because it's a little bit too strong, this kind of effect. I think maybe 50% is fine, just so it's barely visible. Uh, if you wanna try a different technique, instead of doing the kind of cross hatching, you could draw the individual scales if you wanted to. Next, I wanna add a couple of lines uh, and shadows to kind of bring this out a little bit more to make it a little bit more 3D. And I'll do those on another layer above everything. I'll select a, I think a kind of reddish color maybe a magenta like this. Uh, it's okay because if you get the wrong color, uh, you, we, can, we can shift it later on because it's on its own layer. And I'm gonna use the same rough detail dotter brush, a uh, pretty large size, maybe 50%, I think. And I'll just add a couple of lines, I think mainly along the back here. The sides. I'll do a kind of a line for the uh, gill, I guess, maybe around the eye some kind of random uh, shapes on the head there. I'll also do some lines to give some texture to the fins. And just on the uh, back fins here, I'm gonna do some really bold lines because I don't wanna get carried away uh, with a lot of tiny, tiny details here. There we go, I think that's enough details. And I'm gonna set this layer to multiply. I'll lower it and maybe set it around 50 or 60%. Uh, and you can see the magenta is okay, but I wanna kind of play around with the hue slider and just kind of adjust it a little bit. So as long as this layer is selected, just go over to the hue saturation and brightness uh, and we can shift the hue and try to find a color that complements uh, the colors of this particular fish a little bit better. Now, optionally, if you want to, uh, you can grab the water blender. And because this is on its own layer, uh, when we blend it, obviously, it's not gonna affect the body of the fish. It's only gonna affect those lines. So in just a couple of areas, I'll soften the edges of those lines, just as if they were sort of bleeding into the um, wet watercolor underneath. And uh, again, here's another optional step. Um, if you remember, before we did these outlines, uh, if I go to the body of the fish here, remember how we made the fins kind of papery by messing with the curves and the saturation? I'm gonna do the exact same process to the outlines here. So I'll zoom out here so I can see the whole fish. And I'll just make a selection that covers basically the outlines uh, when they're on the fins, the ends of the fins there. Then I'll feather that out. I'll go to my hue, saturation, and brightness. And just like before, I'll desaturate it a little bit. Then I'll go to my curves and I'll just grab the bottom node and just kind of raise it up to make the edges of those lines, just where they enter the very tail ends of those fins, uh, a little bit lighter and uh, less visible. And this one could be done, uh, and I will save this image and show you what it looks like later on. Uh, next, I wanna show you how to give this goldfish a calico texture. Now to do the calico effect, I'll open up the layers panel and I'll go back to the main body of the fish where most of the colors are. I'll grab the selection tool and I'm, I'm gonna desaturate the body of the fish. So I'll make a couple of selections along both sides and also around the head. I'll feather those out. Hue, saturation, and brightness there. I'll desaturate them. And that's gonna give us kind of a blank slate for some of these uh, colors we're gonna add. I think I'll also brighten it just a little bit. There we go. Now for the uh, color details here, I'll make another layer. Uh, and this is just above the body of the fish but underneath the rest of those details. Uh, and on this layer, I'll grab the uh, rough detail dotter, and I'm gonna add a couple of the calico colors. So the classic ones are kind of an almost black color. So I'll do that in a few areas. I'm gonna select a kind of medium light orange color. Then I'll select a red, kind of a bold red color. And then lastly, I'll get a kind of light, 
saturated yellow color to go in there. And there we go, this one is all done. And here's what both of these fish look like when I print them out. So I know this art style definitely isn't for everybody, uh, mainly because it's not realistic at all. Now what it does do, what it's very good at, is capturing a feeling. And I think if you give this style a try, it'll actually kind of subtly change uh, how you see the world around you. Now, uh, if you like this style and you wanna see more videos, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. But as always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.